Uh, my name is Tim McCall and I'm here with Sam Taylor and I'm going to pronounce it wrong so you're going to correct me afterwards. Uh, Stefan Villeman? 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 V- Vima. Yeah, yeah, like that. Um, and we're just going to be talking uh, to Stefan about his work. Uh, Stefan's an animator and an amazing uh, comics artist and you're probably more known for your comics than your animation, is that right? So your comics, you're probably yeah. more known for that than... Uh, yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah. Comics and illustrations. Like yeah. What's, uh, what got the most clicks on uh, Tumblr was yeah. one of my illustrations for the New York, New York Times. Oh, more than your comics? Uh, recently, maybe more, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, do you want to... Yeah. Um, I, guess, I guess there's a couple of things that... I wanted to talk to you about one of them was about the about your comics but another one was about um the goblin because you went to you studied the goblin i just wanted to ask you about your experience of the goblin i guess a lot of people um looking at french animation see the goblin as this school which produces this amazing talent and there's not really anywhere comparable around the world i don't think um and it's all a bit of um, mystery to us I guess the <coughs> language barrier as well mm. and I was just wondering uh, what your experience was is it overall positive oh yeah absolutely yeah it was, was really good was it somewhere you always wanted to go um, yeah I don't think I really heard about it before I looked for a school after I got my uh, grade so yeah, then I, it, it looked like the best one. So with this one you finished secondary school? Yeah, I finished secondary school and I uh, tried to enter Goblin straight after and I didn't get it the first time. Okay. So I, got, uh, I did one year at the Fine Arts. At where? At the Fine Arts. Oh right, is that a school? School of Fine Arts. Oh yeah. right, okay, in Paris? Uh, no, in Angoulême. Okay, oh right, right, right. Yeah. And, and you studied like traditional painting and stuff like that? Um. Uh, yeah. Not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. And uh, mm. art, art history and everything. Oh, okay. And study at the fine arts. And what level was that? Degree or postgrad? Uh, I just did one year. So, so it was. Yeah, it was kind of uh, like the first year. You kind of do things, and then you start. You you choose to get deeper into it with some disciplines, if you like. Oh, okay. Just like a foundation or something. Like yeah. That. Okay. So how old were you when you went into the Goblin? Uh, eight, 19 maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and how does it work in the first year? Are you working on other people's films, or do you do something of your own? Uh, no, first year you just learn. You you just do two D, and you get to know all the the rules and the base, and it's uh, only exercise. Like first month is uh, what they call. Uh, Premilin- preliminary. Okay. Oh, yeah. So you just animate uh, both bouncing, uh, water dripping, this kind of stuff. Like gear rotating and. <coughs> if, uh, A gear rotating on pencil and paper? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. <coughs> I've seen that on people's uh, show reels of their it's first year. Yeah, like if it was in 3D. But mm. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, it's just exercises. And we got some uh, guys from out of the school, like animators, uh, teaching us. Okay, so you have guest lecturers. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's not the most uh, the most funny year because it's the, the first year. Yeah, yeah, because you have to learn all the basics. Hmm. Had you done any animation before then? Uh, yeah, I had done like really uh simple things mm. in order to get in a uh, goblin right, right, right. I had, had to show some things yeah and i did like here yeah, actually i did gifts really yeah. oh, okay and it, it was a while ago like uh, maybe it was 2003 or four. Oh, really and with that was that the first animation you'd ever done uh yeah i, I don't know gifts yeah yeah i did them in a uh, uh, freeware called uh oh, shit, I, I don't remember the name. <laughs> Uh, it was a really b- basic thing that anybody could use, and it was uh, it was really fun. Like you could, uh, it, it it was all black and white, right? And there were levels of uh, frames, like like in mangas, you know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, little dots with more uh, or okay. less space between them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To do levels. So it's like a checkerboard pattern, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah actually, it's, that's funny because my the first thing, piece of animation I ever did was an animated GIF. That was, yeah. uh, I think I was like 15 or something. And I think that animated GIFs are such an interesting uh, medium because they're so because they're so accessible. Like yeah. you can really easily share them. You can really easily download them. And you can really easily like take them apart and strip them back together and the quality doesn't seem to matter so much. It's like it's kind of like a bit of a dirty format. Yeah. But it's but it's stuck around for so long it's obviously mm. um it's obviously, you know, like it obviously works really well. Yeah. Yeah and and if you get them really clean, like you you can get really nice gifts. Mm. Yeah. You can get out of that uh, like low fi uh, aesthetic. Okay. And you get really nice things. So when did you <coughs> first discover the like? Because I remember when I remember when I first came across your work, um, I was really impressed by it. I loved how you got the um, kind of compression artifacts. Yeah. Uh, from the GIF, which is, I guess, the GIF compression artifacts are completely different than any other yeah. file format. You get that weird dot effect. Yeah, different. Um, is that what it's called? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, I, I just remember that being really, um, really distinctive. I hadn't really seen too many other people using that kind yeah. of as a, as a stylistic mm. element. And I was wondering when you first discovered that, whether that was something you saw and you tried to emulate, or was that something? Uh, that no, like it came randomly when I exported my thing and it was, yeah, I saw that it looked nice. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, after your first year, or after you'd applied and submitted these gifts and that, you just went through the the course normally and you, you wasn't sort of experimenting with that kind of thing during your course? Uh, not in first year. Like mm. I, I don't think I really did any personal uh, animation mm. in, the, in the first year at Goblin mm. because I was too busy learning the basics and... Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, we started like second year at Goblin. We start the like the first exercise that we had was to do a short film in Flash. Right. Okay. And this was really good, like because I just I think it's the same for everybody who studies there. Mm. First year is kind of uh, yeah, it's not very fun. Mm. And second year, when you start the year, you do your own film, and it's really fun. Mm. Is that the comp test thing, or is that for the NSE? Uh No, it's before. Uh, Even before. I, I, I don't know if, if it's the same every year. Right. Yeah. So it was just. Uh, it, it was about learning Flash. Because okay. first year you just do uh, things on paper mm. and pe with a pen. Mm. And second year you start to mess with the computers. Okay. So. And is that something that they've all. Is that a recent thing that they started getting people to use Flash? Or well, have they done, been doing that for years? No, I think they did it bef before I studied there. Okay. Yeah. And we got uh, a really nice uh, teacher. We, we've been taught uh, Flash by uh, Boris... Uh, Boris something? Boris. <laughs> <laughs> Big up Boris. <laughs> Who's one of the, one of the original uh, creators of Lascar. Oh really? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And, and that's all done in Flash. Yeah. Yeah. So he's. I think he, it's one. Yeah, it's a classic uh, Flash animated series. Mm. And he's a super nice guy. And it was really cool to have him. Uh, Is it that guy? Boris Dolivet. Uh, ah yeah. 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 So Boris, Boris Dolivet. Dolivet. Yeah. 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 It must be him. And the and the name of the TV series is Lascar. Yeah. L a s c a r s. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I really loved Flash when I started, mm. uh, and yeah, I did. I did lots of Flash. Yeah, I kind of. Uh, but it's funny because in the first uh, time, I, I I was in, when I was at Goblin, I was kind of uh, into doing uh, economic animation. Mm. And Flash looked like a really nice uh, way to f to do it. Like I was really into simplifying the design and mm. do things as simple as possible and try to my, my idea of uh, good animation was that you could do really cool stories and mm. and shit and make it the longest 
So it's possible uh, by, economy, uh, by saving money on the animation. Yeah, yeah. And since then, I think that I, I've kind of changed my mind, and I think that if you do, if you really push the animation and you have uh, really deep and detailed shit, you get really, you, you get a very exciting result. Yeah. Would, would you say that your stuff at the moment is not very economical in the way that you design? No. Yeah. Uh, it depends on what on what I do, but uh, I think I'm getting into more and more details. Mm. And I'm not sure it's a good idea. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe to go backwards and go back to some more simple things. So do you find it takes longer to produce a bit of animation in Flash in your style than it, it would have done like four years ago? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And why were you why were you going for this kind of economical style four years ago? Was it because you can be bothered to? Yeah, and I think stuff? because I was at Goblin, and there, there's a very uh, it's a very Disney kind of spirit, and mm. all the teachers are are like consider that the Disney style is the best, and that you have to is that true? Do all on once? Is uh, that, is that true? That I mean, like it's it's. Is uh, for all the teachers teaching in that style because uh, nothing, not everything most that comes out of Goblin looks like Disney to me. No, no, but most of the of the teachers and it's and I, and I think they're right. I, I, no, I don't think they, that Disney style is the best, but I think that it's the best way to teach animation, okay. like to go uh, really high in expectations technically, mm -hmm. so that people can do really uh, really pushed uh, things. Forgive me, I'm opening a bottle of beer. And I'm just gonna just be yeah. out. Sorry. Do it. Send one more one while I'm sort of ruining the podcast. Okay. Done. Sorry, everyone. That's better. Yeah. Nice. So I think I think it's really nice to to get the the students to know uh, the techniques and to be able to do things in the Disney style. Yeah. So it's it's all right that they they push this yeah. uh, way of thinking. But when I was at Goblin, I was kind of. Uh, uh, it's wanted anti to, you wanted to do something yeah. different. Did yeah. you ever like embrace that kind of teaching when you was there? When I was there, I was not really into it. Like I've never <laughs> really did the uh, really advanced animation. I was like, yeah, Flash is the way to go. You have to. <laughs> so so, so has your has your showreel got any of those tests on it from Goblin? Like any of those? Like have you got Aladdin on your showreel? Ah uh, no, no. Maybe uh, when I first graduate, but since I then it. Uh, uh, yeah, by yeah, the way, I don't have an updated showreel at the moment. Uh, it's not really good. But uh, yeah, and after after I graduated, I got I got to do animation like for jobs, and I got into it, and I really loved uh, uh, pushing it, and I had to do things uh, like the Disney way, uh, as I've never really done. So this is now. this is freelance work as a TV yeah. animator. Yeah. I guess in London. Uh, first in Paris. Okay. Yeah, I've been working there for a few years. Was that a whiz? Uh, yeah, I worked at Wiz for some time. Yeah. Where, where else are you working at? Uh, different places like Chez Ali, One More Prod, uh, uh, Je Suis Bien Content, different mm -hmm. companies. Right. Yeah, lots of at, at Wiz. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, doing 2D animation and pushing it. Mm -hmm. I, I, got, I, I had to do it because it was jobs. Mm -hmm. I, I got into it and Hmm. No, I, I, I kind of. Uh, so you mean like pushing the technical skill level yeah. of yeah. animation? And do you do you still enjoy doing that kind of stuff as well as the illustration? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> yeah, I, I like to. I really like to do it when I'm working on my own designs, like when I'm doing illustrations and mm. uh, have to animate them. Yeah, I I suppose the first time, probably me and. Sam <coughs> was aware of you. Probably most people who are aware of you is, is uh, through your comics. Yeah, and um, it's kind of funny that your first initial tests into animation was these gifs, and then it's also kind of you went and did like your animation course, and then after leaving it, the thing that's kind of got you known is is the gifs. And uh, <coughs> for people who might not know them, Steph does these. Uh, animated comics that kind of exist as GIFs on Tumblr and uh, they get quite well shared, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Are yeah. you aware of how often, how much they get shared? Can you? I suppose there's uh, no yeah, I'm on analytics. <laughs> <laughs> Stalking. Um, so you can see how many times the images are shared on analytics, can you? 
Yeah, and then it's uh, yeah. I can see who's coming to my blog and uh, where from. But then I can't see, like for example, if I got an article on, uh, like I got an article on uh, Wired recently. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. But this I can't. Was I it Wired.com or was it on the you know, uh, print publication? Yeah, I think it was Wired.com. Mm. But this I can't see how many clicks it got. Right. Maybe on the page. Uh, I, I can just see who's coming to my blog. And people, you're saying people coming from Wired? Yeah. Wow, that's really great. Yeah, you're not on the. Analytics? Google? Um, yeah, our site, I think our site is, but um, I don't really, I haven't really been looking at it. Mm. Um, I, yeah, I, yeah I, I, I've got analytics, I check it mm. every now and then. And, um, but yeah, no, it, there's, I'm never sure exactly how it works because you have that thing where people can, uh, people can subscribe to your feed through like Feedly or Google Reader or something yeah. and I don't know whether that comes up or not. I don't know. Uh, yeah. And then also stuff like with Tumblr, I know that when stuff gets shared and people copy yeah, and paste yeah, the images onto web pages, yeah. it's quite difficult to know. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't use analytics with my Tumblr. Right. I just check the stats on mm. Tumblr. Okay, All right. I haven't used Tumblr that much, I don't know. Yeah, okay, no, I yeah, mean, I kind of started recently. Okay. So what in, um, what, was you doing comics at all before animation or what sort of made you decide to kind of explore that area? Uh, yeah, actually, I've been uh, when I was a kid. I was really into comics. Yeah, like yeah, got loads. Like I was buying loads of comics and mm. you know, really liked it. What sort of comics did you like? French comics or? Uh, yeah, mostly French comics. Okay. Yeah. How about superhero comics and anime? Uh, I, no, I've never really been into American comics like superheroes, uh, but uh, but mangas a lot. Yeah. Not actually, I kind of discovered mangas uh, in my teens, mm. and uh, I really loved it. Yeah, like my favorite uh, comic book ever is Akira. Mm. Oh really? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, I think it's pretty com- good. Complete. It's the best. Have you read it the whole way through? I guess you have. Yeah. <laughs> I never, I've never managed to get the whole. No, way I've got like one or two issues on my shelf. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, growing up, I kind of lost my interest in comics okay I get still I, I can still enjoy the comics sometimes but I don't really buy any so what kind of stuff did you read when you were a kid when you went uh, into comics like French classics like, uh, like m- one of my favourites were Torgal Torgal yeah it's Torgal it, it's uh, okay. a French comic about the Vikings oh right <laughs> I don't know I don't know I don't yeah I think it's, uh, I think uh, no, great things. It's kind of funny, like you, you say you were looking for like the most economical style of animation, and then you, it's sort of no surprise actually that then you started doing comics, which is kind of maybe like the storyboards yeah. for animating. But then you start, did you ever do any just plain comics that weren't animated or before you started doing animated ones? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was really into it, and yeah, I was <laughs> eating. No, and then I decided to go towards animation because, mm. uh, yeah, it's, it's it is kind of, uh, but yeah, animation. I I found out about animation when discovering the Miyazaki's films. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, like yeah. Uh, Princess Mononoke. Mm. When I was, uh, I think I was like fourteen when it went out. Oh right, yeah, yeah. And I decided to choose animation rather than comics. Right, okay, because it. Uh, got me really tripped mm. uh, compared to any comics that I could have read. Right, right, right. Because of the music and everything. And yeah, yeah, and yeah. And motion. And it, I think it's much uh, richer than comics, and that's why I decided to go to animation instead. Mm. When you were at Copland, did you like the uh, whole idea of working as a group with people? Or did yes, you, you think you yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really good. Uh, especially on uh, when we, we did the uh, Ansi film, uh, Anima Factorist, the one with the rabbit. On the, yeah, 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 yeah. It was flash like it. What's it, it called? Anima Factorist. It's, uh, we, we did that one in second year, and it was, yeah, yeah second year was all about flash for me, like, uh, because I just discovered it. And, uh, so we did that one in flash, and it was kind of an uh, economic way to animate, and it was uh, not the typical. Uh, Goblin film. Which one was it? I, I it's like a it's a rabbit and is it cycling? Is that right? 
Uh, yeah, Tom Boat is, yeah. I guess, making dance moves. Yeah, it's school. like aerobics in the city. Yeah. Or something. Is that right? Oh, I just making up a new film. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it's kind of right. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's. And uh, yeah, we did really great teamwork mm. on, on that. And yeah, it was great. Good. Do you still keep in touch with a lot of people who you. Uh, yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, lots of cool. mates. Do, wha- and where do they work? Is there a lot of people in London or is it? Uh, not a lot many in London. Paris. Uh, yeah, many are in Paris from my uh, my graduation year. Like uh-huh. uh, most, some of my mates got a studio together, which is called uh, Miss Yodam. Yeah, I did that. No, yeah, no, they no. do a really good uh, job. Okay. Yeah, there are some like it's funny. Everybody's kind of getting into uh, illustration at the moment. Okay. Everybody from my uh, graduation year. Yeah. Okay. Um, wasn't one of the guys you on your film at Disney now or something? Um, Is that right? Yeah, one of the guys did work at Disney for some time. I don't really know about about uh, his uh, what what he's doing right now. Uh, who is that? Um, Mel Gourmelin. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's a good animator. Yeah, he's a really good animator. He worked on lots of feature films. Mm-hmm. I think he designs for uh, The Speed of Me too. Oh, really? Yeah. How, how big are the year groups in Copland? What do you get? What? How big are the year groups? Like how big? How many people? Uh, I think it's some something like twenty four people. Some okay. something like that. That's quite big. Yeah, it's bigger than I thought. I thought it would be. So oh, yes, yeah. yeah, it's too big. And um, at the moment, you're trying to push more your illustration comic stuff. Is that right? Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm. Uh, yeah. This year was more about comics because I did uh, finish my animated comics. Mm. So to sum it up for people who don't know about it, mm. it's, uh, I, I started them in 2011. Mm. And I did, at first I did like a, an episode which was just something like 50 GIFs who, which uh, make uh, comics. Mm. And it was just on my blog and I've gone on and I did four of them, like four episodes of 50 GIFs. 50? Yeah, about 50. Okay. Yeah, and one of them was, was longer, like 70 or something. Like wow. That. Yeah. And, and how long does it t- take you to do each gift? Uh, I did three gifts per day. I really when did. I was working full time on that. Right, that's, that's quite a lot, I think. Mm. Yeah, it's impressive. Mm. Yeah, so in the beginning, it was something that I did on my blog, and it got uh, some uh, online uh, success. And then it, uh, then in uh, the beginning of 2013, I sold the rights to a uh, French uh, digital magazine called Professor Seeker. So by now I don't, uh, I, I can't uh, show them on, on my blog anymore. Mm. So you can just see little bits of it here, here and there. Is that perm- they got the permanent uh, rights to it? Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, they got them for 20 years. Okay, 20 years? Yeah. And what's the name of the website? Professor Seco. Seco. Seclop. Yeah. Right, okay. And do you have to view them on that site? You have to pay or be a member or you just can uh, go and see it? Yeah, actually you can see the current uh, issue of the magazine for mm. free. Yeah. Like you can see some, something like 80% of it for free. Mm. And like there's uh, additional uh, content that's just for the subscribers. Yeah. So how do people find that if they want to go and look at it? What's uh, the address? Yeah, it's you can find that on the web, but it's all in French, but okay. or, or German. But you can find it on the website of Arte, which is a French TV channel, which is really good, and that I got to work for. Uh, I, I did gifts for them. Okay. Oh, cool. So these people are connected to Professor. Yeah, they have a partnership with okay. them. Right. And so you can see the current issue every month. You can't see my comics anymore because they are done and it was last, last year. Uh, but yeah, you you could have if you were into my things, you could have read them uh, the whole way if you if you got to read the free version every month. So, so, so what do they intend to do with them for twenty years if they're not sort of <laughs> displaying them anymore? Um, yeah, for the moment they kind of in a, you can't really access them, mm. and that's that's a shame. Yeah, that is a shame. Yeah, but I uh, it. We may go. We may do a anthology of them that oh, you yeah. can buy. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And I'm really looking forward for that. Yeah, that's great. And so would that be a print thing? 
No, it would be something that you can download and left all the episodes in once. And, uh, ah, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think that sounds really good. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Was yeah. that a big decision for you to sell the rights to your uh, yeah. comics? Yeah, it was kind of a big decision. Yeah. Did they approach you or did you... Yeah, they approached approach me yeah. because they, what they want to do is to... The, the guys who set up the magazines, uh, the magazine are... Uh, are, are comics authors themselves okay. and they've been into the comics industry for four years and they they felt that uh, there was a lack in digital comics in, mm. the, in the business yeah. and they wanted to make a magazine which is which would be kind of a reference in digital comics so the, they approached me because they they found out about what I did and it, it seemed to be a good content for them because what they were trying to do is to to have uh, innovative innovative things which kind of uh, met digital and comics. Is there who else who else is comics that they show? Is there anybody else doing similar things to that? Because I'm quite surprised actually about. I mean, there's a few web comics that are distinctively um, like screen based. You know, they're, they're they're not obviously not intended for print. Mm. Like they look would look better on the screen. Than yeah. They do in print. Yeah. But there's only like a handful uh, handful of those, um, mm. and uh, and I think that your your stuff is. Definitely, like a lot of the stuff that I've seen, looks like you could only really have it online. Like it could yeah, really yeah. exist in print. Um, I mean, it would. I guess some of it would look quite cool if it got printed. But um, yeah, yeah. But when I did them, it was one of my uh, goals. That yeah. Because I, I I did them for my blog. Okay. And it felt uh, uh, interesting. Sorry, interesting to. <laughs> To have something which would be made for a screen yeah. rather than just a comics. Yeah. And as I'm an animator myself, it was interesting for me to to match animation and comics. And so, but these guys, uh, you said they were looking for people who were doing digital comics. Did, have they got a lot of other people who were doing similar things? Or? Yeah, actually, I think it's uh, it's a really good idea, but. Uh, and we're getting more and more. They're getting more and more people doing it. Yeah. But uh, maybe it's still quite new, and it's hard for them to find uh, people doing digital content. I find that so strange. I feel like comics are such a perfect medium to be done digitally, and they have been for such a long time. I mean, you you could have almost had, you know, web comic like pretty good web comics for the last twenty years that people could download. Um, and yet people it has never really taken off in, in, in the way that I expected it, it to I don't know whether that's something that's about subscription models or the fact that people like to physically hold comics in their hands or I don't know yeah, I think the way people value them or something I don't know yeah to me it's more of a, I think it must be more of a practi- uh, practical uh, problem is that most uh, People doing comics uh, don't have the technical uh, skills to do animation. Really? Oh, oh, all oh, right. Okay. The yeah, animation, because it the takes. Animation it, it takes. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. 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 I guess so. So yeah, you can really be good in comics, but yeah, as long as you don't know the, the techniques, mm. you, you, it's hard to to make animation. So why did you uh, when you so when you decided to go into Bobland? I mean, you said that animation wasn't something that you always wanted to do from when you were a kid. Uh, no, I wanted to do animation oh, since I was okay. 14. Yeah, I've, oh, yeah. okay, right, sorry, I didn't realise that. Yeah, yeah. No, I've, yeah. but uh, I, before before I was into animation, I was really into comics. Right, okay. But I mean, at what point, so I guess uh, there was a certain point where you decided that, I feel like you could do, you probably could have done comics without um, attaining that same kind of technical proficiency with animation that you have. What made you decide to mm. spend all that to invest that amount of time learning how to do animation? Yeah, I, at some point I had to to get into studies, and yeah, that's that's what also one of the reason why I 
you got into animation is that I think that you don't need lots of studies to know how to make comics because it's it doesn't take this many technical uh, avail uh, uh, abilities. So I had to choose uh, to choose studies and as I was doing drawing and I wanted to make it a job, I chose animation because it's a very technical technical thing and you have to study it in, in, before you can do anything. So, so is it about um, you felt like you'd be m maybe more able to make money out of it if you had yeah, yeah, that animation absolutely. as well? Yeah. Okay. yeah, and also I, yeah, I, I got more uh, emotions when watching an uh, animation film rather than when reading comics. Okay. Mm. Why do you think that is? Is that about the yeah. sound and the yeah, yeah, I think it's mostly about the sound. Mm. It's a more immersive experience. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Although you can get quite into depth into reading. Yeah, but I must admit, I, there's yeah. not. I've never read a book or a comic that's made me feel the same as. Yeah, the feelings I felt when watching a film. But when a when a when a comic makes you cry, I've never cried over a comic. I think it was black and white or something. Really? really? Yeah, it's a, it's a sad bit. Yeah, I've heard. That, yeah, I've heard that. Um, well, the director of the on King Creed cried in that, but I was I was sort of had read that interview with him and, and been like, right, I'm going to read that and was sort of waiting for this bit where I was going to cry and <laughs> it's never came. Um, but uh, but so it's kind yeah, of fun. I think you have to listen to violin when <laughs> you have to listen to what violin. Oh uh, right, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you had a busker on your train when you was reading it. <laughs> the violin <laughs> multimedia experience. Um, so now you're actually you're sort of the king of the web comics, and now you're kind of. <laughs> it says it on your t-shirt that you're wearing. <laughs> uh, that. Uh, but now you're going into you're doing a new comic which is going to be is being designed for print. At the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's really as you say, it's really designed for print, mm. and it's uh, it's something that I'm really into, like thinking of uh, the platform that I'm mm. working for mm. and adapting what I'm doing to this platform. Mm. So when I did my animated comics, it was like I knew that it was going to be on my blog and that it would be digital, so that I could mm. do animation, I could do gifs, and it would be really, really, it would fit nicely on the internet. Yeah. And this time it's a uh, it's a traditional comics, so it's uh, one hundred percent uh, analogic. It's all drawn. You're all drawn. Yeah. yeah. There's no digital coloring or anything. Uh, no, there might be like a little, just a little bit. Mm. I'm not even sure. Yeah. And it's, I'm going to pay a lot of attention to the layout and how mm. does it look on paper and and yeah, it's going to be very different from do the you, animated. Do you have one. a publisher? Uh, I've uh, I've been in touch with several pub publishers and I'm uh, I'm waiting to finish it and then I'm going to see the body. Cool. And you, from when I was talking to you about, it, you had a kind of much different. Um, like direction you want to take it, you, it's not something you just want to have on the sel shelves of comic shops, or uh, you you see it as a real uh, substantial piece of art in itself. So even like the print, you want it to be a nice book, and yeah, yeah, no, it's still it's still comics, but it's uh, uh, yeah, it's different from from most comics. Mm. It, it's kind of in between an illustration book and uh, and the comics. Mm. And the form is very different, and yeah, I, I yeah, I was thinking maybe I, I'd like to to market it as something different than uh, your average comics, mm. and that's also one of my uh, worries when thinking of getting a publisher. Yeah, is how they're gonna sell it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think from I remember you talking from this one talking before, you had quite an interesting insight into how different. Uh, I don't know, like areas or, or or mediums or whatever can kind of, if you sell yourself as one thing, people start to judge it in a different way, and just because yeah. it's on a blog or yeah, it's a silly thing, but I think that we all do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's all a matter of context. Like if you see something in any context, you're going to judge it in a different way than mm. if you see it in a, another context. Mm. So that's something that I uh, that, that I want to pay attention to when. And, and, and like, what is the main 
reason for that? Is that just is it a monetary thing? Is it or is it a, is it a way of building yourself in a direction that you you want to go in as opposed to another? Or like, what what why is that that you're thinking in that way? Uh, because I do lots of uh, of uh, commissions. Yeah, and it takes me lots of time, and it, it pays the rent, and it's all good, and I mm. like it. But when I when I have the time to work on my own mm. things, uh, I want to do it the best way as possible. Mm. And uh, yeah, and I think it's something that you have to be aware of, like the kind of the way to 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 show it and mm. to present it, and it's. Just something that I, d- I don't want to to fuck up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, for, sure. for the moment, I'm taking my time to finish the book, and then I really want to pay attention to how it's going to be sold and what it's going to look like, and if it's going to look like a. I I just don't want to look like a bridge comic. Book yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I I think it's not too a bridge. And like even the way you're producing it, you went and did. Uh, what you went to Sweden or something? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I got. I, I, I'm a laureate of the program Hors les Murs of the French Institute. Okay. And they, yeah, I got a grant from them to go to Sweden and do the book. And it's more. And it, this is other people. This is people who do it. Are doing fine art around you and. Uh, yeah, I was in a place called Konstepilemin, mm. and it's a uh, it, it's a big place for artists in uh, Gothenburg, mm. in Sweden. And uh, yeah, there were lots of guys doing like there were painters, sculptors. Sorry, could you just explain e- exactly what happened? You you're a, a French Institute is an organization worldwide, and like there are some in every maybe in in, in most of uh, capitals in the world. And they are setting uh, exhibitions and they are promoting the French culture uh, around the world. And they have a program called Hors les Murs that anybody could apply to. And it's it's about uh, going abroad you, to to uh, to a different country. You mean you say anybody, any French person or anybody? Yeah, yeah. I think you have to be French. Okay, <laughs> any French person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, but it's open to any discipline. Like you can be a dancer, a choreographer, a sculpture, anything. Mm. And you have to have a project in uh, the country to, to do it. And uh, then they select people to. So you apply to this. Yeah. And then you went to Sweden for a month. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And how far did you get through the the current thing? Does it have a name? What you're working on now? Yeah, yeah. It's called uh, Les Quatre Saisons. Okay. As the Four seasons. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I think I did half of it when I was in Sweden. Okay. Like it was my goal. I, I knew that I couldn't finish it. And have you been doing uh, much on it since you came back? Uh, no, I've not touched it since I came Really? No. Yeah. You've just been busy? Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'd like to finish it as soon as possible. How do you find, uh, when, you, when you're working um, on these comics, are you working completely on your own usually? Is it like you're working in your bedroom or your? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like uh, as I do animation and it's a very uh, it's a very uh, collaborative. collaborative yeah. yeah, cooperative way to work. I love it. But when I do my comics, it's what's good about comics is that you can really go uh, uh, personal. Yeah. So yeah. I think I think that that's generally the interesting thing about drawing is. Especially in with animation, is you've got two paradigms. Like you can be completely on your own, or you can be completely in a group, mm. and you can swing back between the two. That's what I really like about it. Yeah, me too. Um, working really individually. I also really like the fact that I can work on my own personal stuff and then go and work on something just as an animator. So I could, you know, direct something yeah. and then go off and just be an animator and just be completely like submissive to the machine. And, yeah, me you know, too. Yeah, it's some money. Of it, yeah. It, yeah, it's it's yeah. sometimes like a really enjoyable experience. Yeah. I think to to not be in any kind of creative control or yeah, have absolutely. any responsibility. Yeah, yeah and that's something uh, really good about being a, a craft craftsman. Mm. Like you're here, you're doing your thing, and you're just trying to to make it the best as possible, and and there are you have to please the director and to do what what he wants. Yeah. So, so sometimes it's it gets uh, 
you, you get pressed from doing it mm -hmm. rather than doing your own thing. Yeah. I was, there's one other thing that I wanted to ask you about was um, uh, from the biography that I found of you on your LinkedIn was... Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I've done my research. I haven't uploaded around. my LinkedIn in a long time. Uh, I I'm sure you can find a, a, a better biography. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, I, I looked around. I had yeah, a little... Just a good biography uh, on uh, the toilet wall about <laughs> that. You. <laughs> uh, but you've done, you've done a bunch of stuff for the New York Times. Yeah. Uh, and I was, uh, I was wondering how you got those jobs. And... Uh, and whether you've done anything similar to that since? Uh, I f that I, they contacted me, I, and I think that's, uh, that's all from my comics. Yeah, uh, like my animated comics got lots of uh, views, I got some articles, and I, I think they just bumped it to, into them. Like, I, yeah, I, I got a job from uh, to from Arte before, like the French TV channel that I was speaking of, which was kind of the same thing, it was animated uh, illustrations. So they were the first client to I mean, me to do something after my comics. And uh, yeah, then there was the, the New York Times that I did gifts for. And uh, yeah, since then I've done some illustrations for The Atlantic. As well, but not okay. um, without yeah. animation, yeah. just yeah. Uh, plain illustration. Yeah, I remember, I remember seeing you. And uh, yeah, I'm doing an animated gift for a, a Canadian magazine called Inui at the moment. Okay. Cool, what? Inui. Okay. okay. It's new too. And, and, uh, and, do you, uh, and have all these people contacted you directly, or has it been through your. Yeah, yeah, manager? I have an agent in France, but. Uh, I, uh, What's the name of the agent? Lesilus in Paris. And uh, yeah, it just take, uh, takes care of the French clients, like French okay. or French speaking countries. Mm -hmm. But uh, everything that's US or UK, I don't have an agent for them. It's just straight to me. Okay. Do you prefer it that way or would you prefer to have an agent? Uh, I don't have any opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't bother you. No, yeah. As soon as is is there much of a business side to it? Do you think uh, if you're working individually, I mean, you don't need like a producer, I guess, that, as you would have with an animated production. Yeah, you can do all the. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, all yeah, stuff because stuff. it's much uh, uh, quicker than doing uh, animation. Okay. Yeah, that's what's good about GIF. Is uh, yeah, I, uh, it's just like if you would just do one shot in a in a commercial, mm. you can do it yourself in mm. quite a. Way. So the the way I first met you was through your brother, Jonathan, yep. right? Um, and we both worked on a job at the mill a little yep. while ago. Uh, I was on it for a very short time, but you were on it for a bit longer. And um, I was wondering how you, uh, which one of you guys started doing animation first, mm -hmm. first whether it was you, you or Jonathan? He did. Yeah, he, he did. did. Yeah. He's your older brother, is that? Yeah. Right? Yeah, he did. Uh, he studied at Superfogum in mm -hmm. uh, France. And I studied at Global. Okay. And so how many years before you did he start? Uh, maybe two years, three years. Okay. And uh, yeah, and he's, he's living in London as well. Yeah. And uh, is there any competition there between the two of you? <laughs> no, no. It's funny, there's a lot of animation bro brothers in. Uh, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, you know come across. yeah well, it's not the brothers yeah. Taylor. Me and my brother, there was a guy in my course uh, whose brother did animation. There was yeah, um, the McLeod brothers or whatever. Is that right? Who's that? Um, I've said their name wrong, I think. McLeod? McLe yeah. McLeo? The Highlander? <laughs> the Highlanders, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, the the, the Disney's were brothers. But there was, there was oh, oh, really? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah Walt the, Disney. And the uh, Nicola brothers in, in France as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they're really good. Who were, they, were those the guys who did Fantasy 2000? They did a sequence out of Fantasy 2000? Oh, uh, no, these are... Britsy. Yeah, these are Brits brothers as well, but yeah. The Warner Brothers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are. Yeah, there but are. I, yeah, we, we did that job uh, together with my brother in the uh -huh. but we, we it, it was the only time that we worked together. Have, yeah. have you got no ambition to collaborate at all? Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, we've been seeing him already. Yeah, that'd be cool. Your brother mainly does 3D stuff, is that right? Yeah. Do you think that there's a big difference between uh, both of your approaches to animation? Uh, I think we, yeah, we could be quite uh, complementary. Oh yeah, Yeah, so that means you are quite different. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's like he has uh, all uh, of the CG background that I don't have. And do you think that there's a distinct difference between CG people's approach to work and 2D people's approach to work, or is it just down to Uh, personalities? uh, I I think it depends on who. Yeah. Yeah. I think there is a slightly different culture. uh, Whenever I've worked at CG companies, people seem to be a little bit more disciplined sometimes. In CG? Yeah, Yeah. in my experience anyway. Uh, And there it's... I mean, people seem to take shorter lunch breaks, maybe. <laughs> and, uh, Idiots. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm in 2D, for <laughs> long lunch breaks. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, like, they yeah, that's really good at naming their files. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that, yeah a, there, there are some differences. Yeah. Work a little bit later or something, maybe that's, yeah. maybe that's a modern thing, I don't know. Mm. And, um, so, so do you see yourself trying to work towards not having to animate or like commercially or like what's your kind of what's <clears throat> like in 10 years where would you like to be like what's your kind of because you seem quite clear on the, on a direction you have like where what's the kind of the yeah. ultimate target for you yeah I'm trying to do it like one project at a time so this year I finished my uh, animated comics mm. uh, yeah in the end it's 300 gifts wow wow and uh, yeah, so the next uh, step is to work with Over them. how many years was that? 300 years? Yeah, three years. Yeah, but three most years. of them was done this year. Like before it was just, I was just doing it on my spare time. Mm. And then I got a contract with Professor Cyclop and I have had to, to, to do more episodes and I was getting paid to do them. So I made those this year. Then I'm finishing uh, these comics and uh, yeah, next uh, idea is to make a, a short film. Oh, cool. So going back to animation. Hmm? So going back to like an, the animated, yeah. not just animate comics. Yeah. Like, oh, that's yeah. wow, that's great. Yeah, because I got lots of uh, gifts, and now I want to. Yeah, something that I always wanted to do. Mm. Do you think you're going to find it difficult to sustain interest in something longer than oh. twenty-four frames? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I'd like to work with. Uh, I'd like to do something with related to music mm. and I've uh, yeah I'm a big music fan and I'd like to work with friends in France who are in, into the techno scene there so we've been speaking a bit about it but so yes. this is a short film that would have a music component of it yeah okay but not just like doing a music video no yeah no yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to make it uh, an actual collaboration. Oh, cool! Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, first I have to finish my comics, and then that's the that's the goal for two thousand fourteen. How many more to go? How many more comics? Oh, uh, yeah, I have to. Yeah, I think I did half of it. Like, I have to do all the coloring and. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah. And then next year is about doing a short film. Yeah. Do you have an idea where you want to do that? Do you want to do that in London or Paris or? Uh, yeah, maybe in London. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like living here? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Do you um uh find you end up hanging out with a lot of other French animators? Mm. Yeah, I know quite a lot of French animators. Yeah. Because <laughs> everyone in <laughs> London animation, yeah, is I, said, I yeah, I think that must be a, yeah, uh, I think that that must be a definitely an issue if you're French and you're working in animation in London, you spend so much time at work, and so many of the people are yeah. French, yeah, in the, the best people. yeah, like the first month that I were here, I mostly knew French people, and it was kind of an uh, issue <laughs> for me, even if they're lovely, because I, I felt like I was still in France. Mm. Yeah. But it was not yeah. The, yeah. When I moved here, I wanted uh-huh. to uh, mingle mm-hmm. with English people. So yeah, I think in the first 
time it's you have to to get through it like only knowing uh, expats yeah and then it kind of comes naturally to <laughs> to get to know english people how long have you been here for now uh, about uh, one year mm, okay <laughs> i think we're looking at about an hour yeah yeah good point to stop yeah well yeah. thanks very much Steph. welcome <coughs> I guess that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>